Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome back to another episode of our Very Large Painting. You guys really seem to want to see it again this week, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Of course, if you're excited for this and you want to see another episode next week, be sure to leave a like or a comment letting me know that you want to see it. All right, let's get started. We'll start off here by mixing up a little bit of brown and black and white on our little detail round. I'm really going to pick up right where we left off last time, and I am going to drop in what feels like some highlight up here. I have my goal for this whole for this whole day of painting is let's get let's get as much on the mountain done as we can, hopefully completing it. And then if we can, let's try to block in the foreground areas, at least get them coated with color so that by the time we're done today, the entire canvas will have color on it. That would be really ideal. I have no idea if we'll get there. We'll see. I did squirt out a little clear gel medium, which I'm not going to use right this minute, but just in case I need it, because everything is dry. There, it's all dried since last time, so. There, a little bit like our, our painting together series, where we have to work on a dry painting, so very similar. All right. Now I'm gonna load a little bit of green and blue and some white into a filbert brush, and, and right up here, just start dropping in some trees. There, see, I want these trees very tiny. They just help to clean up the little area where it's kind of fuzzy. Nice, not too big. Mm, pretty, very similar to the trees we did last week. There. Now we'll take our two inch brush and just a lot of dark color. I really don't care what it is at this point. And I'll throw a little, uh, throw a little bit of medium in there. Throw some red into it, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just begin to underpaint everything down here. And I'm going to kind of look at my drawing here, and I know this is water, so I'm going to come right in here and just underpaint. There we go. It's not going to take too long, I don't think, with this medium. I would normally not do this, but of course it doesn't make any difference because I'm going to let most of this dry just because I can't paint, you know, I can't finish it today. So by the time we get to the, you know, the intricate details, it'll be long dry. There, so I'll just take the next couple minutes and do this. Now, as I go, I may end up, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna take some yellow, and I just wanna throw that yellow in the underpainting, loosely like this, red, and, you know, just change it up that way. Because at least then your underpainting isn't flat one color. That might help us out. Now I'm continuing just dropping in all these nice dark colors. I had to stop a couple times and squirt out more paint. That's kinda, <laughs> to be expected when be something this big. Now, I'm also glopping it on here more thick than I ever would because I figure it's gonna dry by the time we get to do our details, right? It's gonna surely be dry. So, you know, a little, you know, kind of stippling and a little extra texture in there might, might be a good thing because when we go to add the details, it's possible that that'll help us create better textures without actually having to paint physically every texture in because normally we allow the tooth of the canvas to show through, but the tooth of the canvas is so small compared to the scale of the painting that this might give us a little extra texture that we otherwise wouldn't be able to get. So that's my thought. We'll see how it goes. There. Now I'm gonna take a very soft brown color. This brown has a little red in it. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna come down here and just drop in a little bit of, well, what feels like sand under our water. <laughs> Nothing like painting and having to get down on your knees to, to get to part of the painting, but that's all right. Part of the, part of the deal of painting something like this. There, I'm gonna brush this in. Good. And I'm allowing, see, I'm allowing these things to melt together, leaving a little bit of um, space open for our, well, different, you know, highlights that we're gonna have back there for the land. Good stuff. Now, I know I mentioned it last week, but I'm working from a, a couple of my old paintings and I'm sort of combining them together into one. So that's what's going on here. This is kind of the transitional area. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we're gonna go ahead and underpaint the water as well. I'm not sure exactly what color I wanna do the entire, probably wanna make it darker here. A little darker. This is just the background that I want to be super light. And then as we go back, 
take a little bit of our white and I want to tint it with a little yellow if I can find some. There, maybe there we go. White and a little yellow, a little blue. There, and touch a red into it actually so it won't get green. I don't know, just anything to, there, to make a nice bright spot in the background. I'm gonna make this fairly wide. All right. Now with our little three quarter brush, I'm just gonna drop in here a couple of evergreen, well, actually quite a few evergreen trees, some on this side, some on that side of the painting. All righty, there you go. <laughs> Yikes. Now, I don't want to go too um, fuzzy, or I'm sorry, too hard. I want them to be fuzzy. They can be detailed, but I just don't want them hard edged. So, you know, nice variation of color and different things like that, but soft and, and blurry edges, which believe it or not is a little bit tough because we're painting on a dry canvas. So I have to spend an extra minute or two to get those blurry edges, which otherwise would be very easy. There. Ordinarily, I would just reduce the amount of paint, but when the painting, when the background is dry, reducing the amount of paint doesn't really make the edge blurry. There we go. All right, this is good stuff. I'm gonna paint just a couple more on this side and then I'll jump over there. Now, right back here with an extremely vibrant yellow, I'm gonna drop in some background. There, and this is gonna be a silhouette. Now, it's kind of bright looking over at my reference. I'm gonna throw a little bit over here as well to, to tie the brightness around which is nice. Now let's go ahead and take that and sort of dull it down just a bit. I'm going to take some oh, a little umber or something like that, and some green, just whatever I have on the palette. I don't even know. I'm just going to toss these guys right here, right here, because that's going to break that up. I don't want it that vibrant all over the place. Good. That helps. That helps. Soften it up, make it blurry it, make it blurry, blurry it. Yikes. What kind of word is that? There. That's it. Make it a little more blurry. Okay. And then take some, if I have some, some white. Boy, palette space is the hardest part about this. Keep running out of palette space and paint. All right. Now I'm going to continue painting in little evergreen trees. Maybe these are just a touch closer than maybe the other ones we painted, but maybe they're not. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just going to drop some in very quickly. Well, as quickly as I can. There. Mm, pretty. And of course, these are all clumped together. And I, I'm going to continue this light back here. I'm not sure why I painted that dark. I probably should have painted it light, but I'll go ahead and cover that up later. I guess I should grab my palette. There we go. Wow, this is a lot of fun, though. I've been really enjoying this painting. So again, if you hit that like button and you'd really really let us know that you're enjoying this because I gotta know that you're enjoying it. Then we will go ahead and just plan on doing it again next week. But only if you guys want to see that. Otherwise I can come up with something else like we normally do and then we'll do this in a couple weeks. So totally up to you. Doesn't matter. I'm just here to do what you guys want. Make a couple now that are getting a little taller, a little bigger maybe. There. Work these out. But yet we can still do them a little bit blurry. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop in a larger tree up here. Gave myself a little line for a trunk. And there you go. Just drop it right in. Being fairly loose because I know I can detail it with the little detail round later if I want to. It kind of depends on how, how much detail and emphasis we want right here in this area. I really don't know yet. So I'm going to just paint it up loose. Thinking maybe, well, we might end up not really wanting it that detailed, but maybe just highlight it. I don't know. It's a little too early because a lot of different things have to come together. There. Good. Okay, and I know for a fact I do want to stop right about there because I'm going to slide a light. Let me just show you. I don't, probably won't get it done this week, but you know, I want to have a light back here like that. And I'll make sure the water's straight. I'll actually get a tape measure and make sure that I got my, well, at least my water level because I can't <laughs> eyeball it. It's just too much, too much, way too long. So I'll kind of make sure that it's straight. That's very important because when you view it from, you know, 20, 30 feet away, you'll be able to see whether or not that water is flat. Okay, good. So anyways, that looks decent. That looks great. I'm just going to pick out a few of these 
well, a few of these trees where we know we might want some larger, probably get a lot of larger ones over there. Start making them significantly larger and bringing them down lower as well. There. All right, well, that's about all we're gonna be able to get done today. But I sure had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. Of course, don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.